Hello, everybody, and welcome to the music ranking, rating, and reviewing podcast that we like to call Music Meltdown, in which we rate, rank, and review any artist discography, songs, topics, anything in relation to music, what have you. That's what I'm here for. Like in the ELO episode, I have Patrick here, and we're going to be talking about their personal request in that episode, the six albums by the sort of sophistopop, contemporary, R&B, really a ton of different things that they did group Sade, led by Sade. Um, and they were, they're a really interesting band, just overall. It's only six records. They take a lot of time past the 80s to put records out, but they have a really dedicated fan base, I've heard. The people who love Sade absolutely go gaga for this group. Um, maybe one up there. And I have... <laughs> I had not a clue of anything going into this. Like something like Bo Brummel's and to a lesser extent Buddy Holly, I knew essentially nothing before starting this out. And with six records, I will let the cat out of the bag. I was very pleasantly surprised by this discography, but we shall see how pleasant of a surprise that goes for me. As alluded to, Patrick, how familiar were you with Sade? I was very familiar with Sade. Um, her first album uh, hit the U.S. Uh, and I think climbed to number one. Uh, it was at least in the top ten. Uh, they really had a huge impact on the charts. Smooth Operator, of course. Uh, Your Love is King. Um, the uh, whole discography... Uh, you know, Sade uh, spans almost 30 years, but you're right, with only six albums, long intervals in between, but always remained a fan. Uh, and her first three albums in the 80s, uh, I knew those uh, very well. And then and by the time Love Deluxe came out, I was in college, um, but I loved it when I picked it up. And then the 21st Century albums, I knew fairly well, wasn't that familiar with. Um, but then recently I bought her, uh, discography, uh, uh, and it's, uh, which contains all six albums and it's spectacular. It's great. Love it. Nice. Um, as you could tell from that review, you may be a little bit higher on them than me, but I feel like given the slightly longer time knowing this group that may have something to play into it. That being said, I'll go ahead and kick the reviews off. Six records, not really any gray zones as to what should and what shouldn't be included. So let's just get right into this. Um, Maybe starting a bit contentious as I'm going directly to the 80s with the obvious choice of that. I'm going with Stronger Than Pride at my bottom. And it's still a good record. I have this at three and a half stars. I don't think that any Sade record is necessarily poor or lousy or even just mediocre. I think that she has, they have six good potentially great records but this is clearly lower than the quality of the first two records but there's still plenty to offer i'd say it's very similar to promise within its sound having a bunch of sophisticated elements although i'd say on the previous record in this one they're heavily incorporating a lot of world music um and it works really well for them but i think that they're starting to lose steam the 80s were the only decade where they actually put out multiple records and you can kind of feel the fatigue going on them at this point. Um, despite that, the heights are still incredibly strong. I think the song Paradise is great. I think Haunt Me is excellent. And my favorite track would be I Never Thought I'd See the Day. Like I said, I think that it's a good record. I have it at three and a half stars, although I do think that this is definitely their weakest effort as a band. So stronger than pride. Okay. Um, my number six pick would be Soldier of Love, uh, the album that the band released in 2010. Um, but like you, I put Soldier of Love, uh, at three point, or I start out at 3.5 with her discography, uh, stars. I think it's a, uh, a spectacular discography for, uh, the limited number of albums she does have and the amount of time she's put them out. You can, you can hear the care. Uh, even in this, even on this album, which was uh, ten years, I think she released um, 
I want to say she released Lovers Rock in 2000. So this was 10 years after. Now it's been 13 years since she's released an album. Um, but the same players are there. Stuart Matheson, who is primarily a composer with Sade, And then uh, Paul Denman on bass, great bass player. And Andrew Hale, who's on keyboards. That core group stuck together through the whole thing. Even though there's these huge time gaps in between these releases, um, that speaks to uh, their love of uh, being in a band and playing music together. And uh, they're all uh, listed as composers for these songs. I think Soldier of Love is a further continuation of the sound they developed on Love Deluxe, uh, even though it's quite significantly later than Love Deluxe. Um, I think those last three albums of uh, the band sort of have this trip hopish feel. This one does too. Uh, Soldier Love's a very good track. I really love that song. Um, that's a standout track on this album. Long Hard Road, I really like. Bring Me Home. This album is a little. It's Charday is not an adult contemporary band, but it does have a it does have an adult contemporary like sound. I think it's more mellow album. But it's still a pleasure to listen to. There's nothing necessarily wrong with it. Um, for the most part, the production's straight ahead. Um, I think it's not as groove-centered as some of her earlier albums uh, of the band. Um, so um, it's, it's more torch songs. But I like it. It's a good, it's a good record, 3.5. It's a great way to start. Um, and it's only going to get better from here. Okay. I, I wouldn't call them an adult contemporary band, but I would definitely say that they are, they have plenty of contemporary elements, and you can definitely see why, not to sort of pulling any fingers or anything, that maybe like an older or a more mature audience would potentially gravitate towards the music of this group as opposed to necessarily like a plus mm -hmm. 18 or something in the era. Not to sort of right. say anything. Right. No. Okay. No, I, I, I would think that's true. All right. Well, at number five for me, I'm also talking about Soldier of Love, but I wish I could put this album a bit higher because I see it put at the very bottom, and I do think that it's better than what people give it credit for. On Write Your Music, this is their lowest rated, and it's 0. .31 lower than Stronger Than Pride, which I think that is a really massive deficit for records that I just simply don't think are that far apart in quality. But with that being said... Um, this is definitely their most inconsistent release for me. And across the six records, it actually has the only song in the discography that I actually dislike being Baby Father. It's not a horrible song, it's just the production especially is um, really bad on that one, which it leads me to my biggest issue. The production on this record, and another one I'm going to talk about soon, uh, the drums are really bad. They have that really gross early 2000s, like, stink, almost drum loop sound that mm -hmm. is didn't get rid of in their later works and it really hurts those records as much as I like the material and I think that the sound of it is generally great the the drum sound on this record and especially the previous record really do hurt the overall for them for me but despite that I think that they're such a great band and Sade Sade my apologies are such an excellent writer that I can look past those obvious flaws uh, the title track on here, like you said, that's amazing. I also loved uh, Long Hard Road. And my favorites on here are the closing two tracks, Skin and The Safest Place. Mm -hmm. um, it's so close to four stars, but I have this at three and a half. It's like just a notch before. Like it's a 7.9, right below the eight out of 10 that I go up to four stars for. Really good record. Starting out strong. Love it. It's awesome. Um. Next in line, number seven for me is going to be Lover's Rock, uh, which is her other 21st century album released in 2000. Um, I agree. Uh, in fact, I think on Lover's Rock in particular, I don't know if there's any real drums at all. Sounds like a lot of drum programming to me. Um, so it, uh, is, the songs, though, are very good. By Your Side. Uh, the opening track on this song, love that song, beautiful, just flows wonderfully. A uh, lot of, this is guitar centered, uh, as opposed to uh, her other, her earlier albums, 
So lots of acoustic material here. King of Sorrows, really good. Again, a lot of Torch songs on this album. Uh, Every Word I really like. And then uh, Lover's Rock itself, the title track, I think is very good as well. Um, I think you're right. If you don't like the production, uh, the band make it worth your while simply based on the strength of the songs. Um, I think these songs are great. Um, Chardé herself is primarily the lyricist. And I know Stuart Matthewman is primarily the uh, musical composer for these songs, uh, but all the band are listed as composers. So this is always a group effort with them. Um, I think, you know, uh, it took her a while. I think Love Deluxe, the album before this was released in 1993. So it, it sounds like she hasn't been gone that long. It sounds like the band hasn't, you know, hasn't left such a large gap in between there. The records, which is interesting and amazing. Um, also, I would say, as a band, they don't stray too our stray too far outside their wheelhouse, right? They they stick with what they're comfortable with. Now, they definitely have the capabilities and the flexibility because they're good musicians. Uh, Paul Dimon, in particular, is a great bass player um, to vary up their sound, and they do, especially with their '80s albums, but. I think uh, once they got into a groove with Love Deluxe, it sort of uh, dug a trench deep enough for them to stay into and uh, see what kind of uh, song treatments they could uh, come up with with that same smooth groove, that flow. Uh, again, trip hop like elements in here, neo soul. Um, but it's a great, I, I really like, it. I give this album a four stars. I really like Lover's Rock. Um, and it's <laughs> they're gonna start going up from here, so nice. Um, so there's something interesting to note because I was looking at their right your music page before we started. Um, mm -hmm. they do take a lot of breaks in between records, but apparently in the 90s, um, Stuart Matheson, Andrew Hale, and uh, Paul Deneman ended up actually working separately in a group called Sweetback, which oh, threw together a couple of records. I was just looking at the Rate Your Music Now, just says down tempo. I didn't listen to this because I didn't yeah. know it existed until like 10 minutes ago. So cool. I figured yeah. this came out in we'll have to check that up. <laughs> and uh, 04, it's right in between uh, Love Deluxe yes. and uh, Lover's Rock. So that's kind of interesting where you didn't have necessarily Sade, but you had Matheson and the rest of the group all still working and making plenty of music on their own accord, which is yes. really great. That Matthew, I think it's Matthew, man, I think. Is that right? Yep, yep, Matthew. Matthew. Yep. Well, anyways, I'm also so, going yeah. to talk. Oh. Anyways, no, go ahead. I'm going to be talking about Lovers Rock as well. And if I'm being brutally honest, in many ways, I could see this being my number two or my number three, because I think that the songs here are just incredibly strong. Yes. I think that there's a lot of really great things going for it. Um, as you mentioned, this is one of their heavier uh, guitar-based records, and it's really just excellent across the record. But as we, as I alluded to on my previous one, um, this one really reeks of early 2000s pop production styles that just simply haven't aged very well with some incredibly terrible drum sounds going across the record. They're still able to keep the upward momentum coming from Love Deluxe, and the songwriting is really strong. It's just a matter of the production even despite how great the band are, especially on this record, is really tough to bear. But there are some really great songs, uh, King of Sorrow and Immigrant being my absolute favorites. So pretty decent four-star record, but I could easily see it being higher if, you know, it was produced closer to either Love Deluxe or Promise or something like that. It's definitely the one where production most hinders the overall end product. Wow, this is great. For a, a band that was new to you, this is fantastic. That they really had an impact. I'm happy. I'm very happy. <laughs> That's awesome. <Better> be. <laughs> this is this has gone a little bit better than when the last time that somebody did a personal pick. So <laughs> <laughs> good. I didn't want it to be difficult. Um, and I always love, uh, you know, introducing uh, a Sade to people who do not know her or the band, because um, I think the music is so strong, it really, uh, it's deserving of a wider audience, I think. For sure. 
So let's see, we are at number four. Uh, I am going with stronger than pride here. So I think there's there's a there's a bigger gap here probably than anywhere else in this discography between you and me. But that's not that big of a deal. Um, I give this actually 4.5. I really like this album. I really like this album. Production's great on this album as well. Production on all the 80s albums in particular, very good. Uh, Love is Stronger Than Pride is a great way to start it up. Um, but then it ramps up with Paradise. That was a hit for her off of this album. And it's a great song. Uh, unlike uh, the heavy jazz influence that was on Diamond Life and Promise and uh, those two records, uh, this is more Latin influenced, I think. Uh, the rhythms are, uh, they have a more Latin feel, uh, some, some South American feel to it as well. Um, and it gives it a different vibe, but it's still a great vibe. Uh, it fits Sade perfectly. Her voice is uh, growing on this album, too. She's singing higher uh, than she normally has. Uh, she's singing a little higher outside of her range. Uh, she's pushing herself. I think the songwriting's really good on this. Nothing Can Come Between Us. Great groove song. Uh, I also like Keep Looking. And uh, I Never Thought I'd See the Day. I think... For an album, I, you're right, it does get rated lower. It must have been a disappointment for some people, but I didn't find that to be the case. I really, really thought uh, that they had done uh, very well with coming up with uh, different approaches to their signature sound. Um, Quiet Storm, Neo Soul, it's still all here. Her voice is just getting better and better. And in fact, I think... Sade herself, I think she's probably one of the best vocalists from the uh, late 20, uh, 20th century, at least for the last 30, 40 years of the 20th century. She belongs up there with some uh, powerful uh, vocalists like I'd put her up there with Mariah Carey. Um, I think she's uh, she's just different. She's got uh, she's got a different range. She's an alto range. She doesn't have that high soprano range, but it's a, it's a smoky, sultry sound. You can uh, hear Nina Simone's uh, vocals as an influence on her in particular. I know she was a, a very big Nina Simone fan when she was starting out. So um, really good album. I'd say, you know, if you're going to only get uh, four Sade albums, this ought to be included in it. Um, I think it's got some killer songs. I come back to it a lot. I really like it anyway. Um, so I give this 4.5, which means that the next album's going to be up in the top shelf. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. how much I like Sade. Nice, yeah. Definitely not to your level of enthusiasm, but <laughs> it, it's it's nice to see some enthusiasm for the group. And yeah, her, her voice really is very exceptional, very smoky, really sensual at a lot of points. Definitely something that caught me off guard because... I, I heard good things about her voice. I expected to enjoy it. I didn't expect to like it as much as I do. Um, I feel like this might be a slight divergence or I might just sound really silly, but my number three is going to be Promise. Um, I think this is a really strong set of material from the group, but it's not necessarily as good as the initial record for me, despite them clearly developing the sound a bit more, while still having the really slick and sort of smooth pop sensibilities I feel them have more of an overt sort of R&B and world music influence creeping into the sound across this record. Um, Sweet as Taboo is the greatest example of this and is a song I can't quite do enough justice to just how excellent it is. Um, Mr. Wrong is another one that I thought was absolutely great, as well as Tar Baby. And while I don't necessarily like it as much as I liked Diamond Life, I feel like this was a really strong evolution for the group and showed that they wouldn't necessarily be stuck so much in kind of like a pop landscape. They would have a lot more influence and a lot more sort of to draw from than that. I have that a really high four stars, but I feel like this is the one that could definitely sort of shake up if I were to listen to it more. I feel like all of her records could definitely help with that because important to note, I kind of wanted to give this as like a first impression thing. I definitely feel like this is an artist that I could have done better if I did necessarily do a couple of re-listens, get more acquainted with the records. But I feel like just a bit more fun for me to sort of give my 
just a raw virgin take on everything, just sort of see how it all landed with my first experience and my first full exposure to the group. That's kind of how I wanted to view this. Excellent. I think uh, her albums do reward on revisits. Absolutely. Um, that's where I'm putting Promise as well, my number three, but it's a five-star record. So she's got three five-star records. This band has three five-star records uh, for me. And uh, it, it's really hard to choose between the three, so I don't. <laughs> uh, is it a crime? What a great way to start off an album. Such an amazing Torch song. I don't know if you've uh, ever seen her perform this live, but it is spectacular. She does an amazing job on this song. Um, her vocals are she's just growing so much on this album with her vocals in particular. And the songwriting. Um, Sweetest Taboo, one of the greatest songs ever. Uh, I love Bossa Nova and Samba, and it's got that Bossa Nova beat to it. And it just, it's, it's, uh, I love this song so much. So sensual, so groove oriented, just beautiful to listen to. Her voice just smoothly fits in with the instruments. And those, and those South American uh, percussion, that South American percussion, just the Brazilian feel to it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, Jezebel is a fantastic song. Uh, she gets pigeonholed, I think, by people, or, or the band does, as being torch songs and ballads or love songs, but that's not true at all. Uh, some of uh, Immigrant, for instance, you mentioned earlier, she sings a lot of songs, or she has a lot, quite a few songs, about being unemployed, trying to find a job, about day-to-day -day life struggles, about her, her uh, family members uh, uh, being poor, about uh, experiencing life as an immigrant. So it's not just, you know, it's not just, ooh, you know, beautiful love songs or or ballads or torch songs. There's a lot more to this band and a lot more to Sade than people give her credit for, I think. Uh, again, uh, great song on this album, never as good as the first time. Paul Dimmore, he's such a good bass player, and got some, you got some slap groove on this. It's awesome. It's an awesome song, very funky. It's about as funky as Sade ever get, um, and that's cool. Uh, I like it. Um, and then Tar Baby, another, uh, I think, uh, a song that Sade uh, is expressing uh, her experience uh, growing up as an immigrant living in England. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, Marine and other, uh, closes out this album. Really good song. This is a, there's no bad song. Every song is very good to great on this album. Five star, easy, easy five star album for me. Nice. I mean, I mean, like I said, there's really not much of a bad song in the entire catalog. Like, regardless no, of how that's a, i know it's amazing regardless, regardless of how you feel about the sound because i definitely do feel like it could just be a bit too smooth it could be a bit too kind of like mm -hmm. you were saying it wasn't adult contemporary i could definitely feel somebody sort of thinking okay this is kind of a bit pandering a bit really smooth kind of just right, smooth a jazz of and i mean that's fine people are allowed to be wrong they're great but i mean if that's how you feel about it that's how you feel about it now, I, I'm hoping that we can agree here, but I feel like it's not going to happen. Um, at two for me, I have Love Deluxe. Um, I do think that this is a step up from Charming and Pride, a massive step up. They seem to be going a bit more mellow here, like I was mentioning, a bit more contemporary. And it feels like they're most openly inspired R&B records, but, but you can definitely feel the early influences of Trip Hop, which I think gives it a really interesting aesthetic overall and this is definitely their best sounding record i love the electronic flair that this record has at certain spots but the highlights for me would include no ordinary love cherish the day and bulletproof soul the record is really just aces front to back um i think this is the one that i definitely need to go back to the most i have it at a low four and a half stars it's definitely a great record but i feel like like i was saying earlier this discography i feel I, I almost wish that I gave myself more time so that I would be able to get into like my deeper sort of overall emotional thoughts about the record. But it's at this point just sort of an observation. Like I can tell how great it is, but I can't necessarily explain why I think it's great, you know? 
which I can do better with my number one. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think, yeah, I think you will enjoy it even more on, on revisits. Um, but it definitely had some impact and hit you hard enough the first time to where you've shoved these up way up. So that's always a good sign. <laughs> that's always encouraging. No, we're not going to agree because my next album is going to be Diamond Life. But it's a five-star record, too. <laughs> and my God, what a spectacular debut album. There just aren't that many good debut albums that rise to this level. Um, and uh, this one just, it hit so hard. It was the ultimate. It is peak. If you want to call them Sophistapop, I'm up for that. But it's peak Sophistapop. Roxy Music with Avalon tried to get here. They did not make it. Only, sh I think, ABC tried to get here with Lexicon of Love. Roxy Music tried with their last three albums, in particular with Avalon. But they did not achieve the heights that Chardet did. This band really nailed it with this album. Smooth Operator, Your Love is King, Hang On to Your Love, One, Two, Three, all huge hits, perfect songs. They're timeless. The production here is spectacular. Uh, this is probably the album with the strongest jazz influence on it, I think. Um, there's there's certainly R&B and soul in here as well. And you can hear uh, Chardet's love of Marvin Gaye in here. Um, in fact, in a way, they were going towards having, trying to come up with, uh, uh, they were trying to come up with a good combination, I think, of what's going on and let's get it on. Um, because there are songs like Sally and I will, what, I will Be Your Friend and Why Can't We Live Together that talk about social issues, uh, much like what, what's going on. But there's, there's also, you've got Smooth Operator and Your Love is King. So you've got those steamy torch songs and those ballads and those great grooves. Um, when Am I Gonna Make a Living? Another, you know, uh, song I think that, uh, Chardet herself took from her own experience um, and uh, Cherry Pie. I mean, I, I think I've named every song on here because it's so good because every song on here is is diamond quality. This is just a perfect, perfect album. This album usually rates pretty high for 80s albums uh, in a lot of lists, Pitchforks, Rolling Stones. They always include at least this album. Uh, in their 80s, you know, top 100, top 500, whatever. Um, love this album. Love it to death. Uh, these three, these top three albums are just very special to me. Love it. Nice. Yeah, I, I feel bad because I feel like this record Why? Is in, in almost any other year in the 80s, it could be my album of the year because I think that strongly of it. The issue, however, it came well, out. Well, it's 84. That was a strong year. 84. <laughs> Not even that 84 is right, a strong right. year because I think 84 is honestly kind of It was. The issue, however, Ooh. is it has to let it be by the replacements, which is probably like a top 20, 25 record for me just in general. So it's kind of always mm -hmm. going to sort of fall in the shadow of that. And I do agree that it's a fist of pop. It's not quite the peak of that for me. I definitely go Jordan the Comeback by Prefab Sprout. I adore that record. But this is definitely mm -hmm. a close second. Because, That's a great record. Oh, yeah. Prefab Sprout's definitely a group I got to get to at some point. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Steve McQueen's probably a, another peak Sophista Pop oh, yeah. album. For I sure. think this belongs right up there with it. Yep. Absolutely. But yeah, this record totally just blew me away. I didn't even know that they were really a Sophista Pop band or really just like a pop group at all. Maybe this is negligence on my part, maybe a bit of stereotyping but for whatever reason i sort of had the impression they were like a soulful r&b thing which definitely and they are like, too yes but it's definitely one of the lower act attributes of their sound they're very sort of smooth they it's have not as heavy, pronounced yep. yeah they have the heavy jazz influence and, on the later records a little yep. bit of the world music aspects and the trip hop but it, it feels like there's in everything this like undercurrent of sort of soul and r&b and i like what you're saying was sort of a combination of Marvin Gaye, because I definitely feel like almost at a certain point, you could see him leaning in this direction as he was getting into the 80s, getting a bit smoother, a bit more polished. And I feel like 
yes. maybe he could have, you know, if he was able to stay alive, sort of gotten into this realm and definitely create something excellent within that style. Absolutely, you're right. But anyways, back, back Good to Good insight, Shadi. yeah. Um, yeah, this record and the band as a whole, because once again, I was expecting to go into this and it kind of be like, okay, well, Shadi is the star of the band. They're good, but it's mainly just going to be about, you know, her, her vocals and the mm -hmm. lyrics and whatnot. But the band are just incredible, es especially Stuart Mackeyman's just sensational saxophone work across his entire discography, but especially Diamond Love. And her vocals are just totally insane. As I mentioned to you before, reminding me a lot of like a more soulful, sort of boisterous, like Christine McVie and sort of at some points. Mm -hmm. um, she's just absolutely stunning across the board. I think that the writing is incredibly very strong. And the main thing that I love about this record is just every song builds. It has such massive soundscapes and climaxes. They all just sort of elevate. They lift themselves up and just sort of roar is the best way I can put it. I was just totally in love front to back. And I'm glad that you pointed out the individual songs because I can't bring out specifics because to bring out one is just an insult to the other ones. It's like you have to talk about it as a whole. You can't sort of single anything out. I don't give fives on first listens, though. I have I just can't do it. It's just something with me. I feel like that's a little bit too... I, I need more time. So I have it at four and a half stars, but it's incredibly strong and I could definitely see it. Even if not going up, going up in like my four and a half star records because i think that it is definitely a great record across the board awesome that's great um i'm glad that you love them so much i think that's wonderful um okay so my number one has got to be love deluxe it's a wonderful album it's a uh baby making machine of an album <laughs> this album uh you mentioned uh rate rym rate your music uh somebody had reviewed this album in a single sentence saying this album made me pregnant <laughs> this and i can see why um you know everything about this album uh says you know it's just deeply erotic uh although not every song on here is necessarily an erotic or a love song um but that groove that they set in, uh, anybody that uh, is a fan of Portishead would probably appreciate this album and might actually end up liking it. Because if you like your, if you like, if you like Tricky, if you like Massive Attack, if you like Portishead, you like your trip hop, basically, this album is right in within that genre. Uh, and Sade's voice is perfect for it. Absolutely perfect for it. Just like Honey, I want to be wrapped up in a blanket of her voice. I'm telling you, she's spectacular. And this album is where she shines and her vocals really shine. Um, no, Like you'd mentioned earlier, Adrian, No Ordinary Love is really good. Like a Tattoo, I really like a lot. Kiss of Life, fantastic song. Cherish the Day, um, Feel No Pain which is uh, about uh, the struggles her family went through, it sounds like, in England. Nobody, everybody got laid off. Nobody's got a job. They got to stop listening to the blues and get out there <laughs> and uh, get working. Uh, she's got, you know, she's got social issues on her mind all the time. Um, I think uh, Kiss of Life and Cherish the Day that start off, I believe, the second side of the album anyway. It's just a great way to start off that side. And she never lets up. The band never lets up on here. Bulletproof Soul. Great song. Really good song. Um, you know, just a spectacular band. Uh, she's a spectacular vocalist. They're all uh, just wonderful to listen to. You know, uh, this is not some discography where you want to listen to it straight in a row because it will start to sound the same. I think you need to, you know, I think there are, are gems and diamonds within including Diamond Life itself, within her discography, uh, but that you will always want to come back to, always want to come back to. And I don't necessarily have to be in a particular mood to listen to it. She'll put me in that mood uh, if I if I want to get there. Um, just a, a wonderful, wonderful discography. And I hope that she uh, and the band come back together again and do another album. From what I understand, they 
I had read an article earlier this year that, or earlier in 2022 that said she was recording again. So I was very happy to hear that. So they might, they might come back with something else. Yeah. It's like, yeah. they think they're, they're due for one. It's been over a decade at this point. So yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I gotta say in regards to love deluxe. Yeah. It's really good. 92 isn't a strong year for me. I think that's good, but definitely one of the weaker years though in the 90s. It definitely slots into my top five for that year. I was going to say, I bet it slots in yeah. high. Yep. It, it's probably number two, if I'm being honest. It doesn't beat Wish by the Cure, my favorite Cure record, just a heads up. I think that record's pretty great as well. But yeah, it's up there with like, uh, I have Honey's Dead by Jesus and Mary Chain, Angel Dust, Faith mm-hmm. No More. And just a bunch of four star records that are fighting for the spot. Just looking at what I got, probably Harvest Moon by Neil Young, but I don't know. Mm. That but came yeah. out in '92. Wow. Okay. Wow. I mean, if you want to know something else that came out in '92, uh, the legendary record by Shumble on the right there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. with the hit? That one with the hit? Nope. That was '97. Oh, okay. Wow. Sorry. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I know my Shumble one, but don't worry. You know your Shumble one. Yep. Uh, but anyways cool it's fun okay I, I guess i like this group a little bit <laughs> yeah absolutely it's been fun oh, i'm glad sure. that it was i'm glad that they that you like them so much and that it was new to you um because that's hard getting something like, you haven't listened to yet that's that's tough to do I, I gotta say you were mentioning like doing the six in a row could necessarily taint you i i did that and i do feel like maybe for some records I didn't get like the full experience. Maybe like a Stronger Than Pride I could have gotten a little bit more out of. I maybe could have gotten past some mm-hmm. of the production issues on some of the later records because as we've been mentioning, there is so much greatness to be found within this catalog, even past the 80s and past Love Deluxe, which seems to be the runaway. They seem to be a very well critically revered band, but maybe just not getting the sort of widespread appeal that they kind of deserve because they they cover so much ground within the discography and i feel like anybody who listens to them could find like a track or two at the very least absolutely john too absolutely i think they're timeless um i think uh you know some people just don't some people don't some people are groove averse (laughs) some people it always shocks me but uh that happens and some people don't like what they consider to be easy listening um, and don't really have the patience to give uh, a band like Sade the chance uh, to maybe break through uh, and they end up expanding their taste. But um, I know you, you you have an open mind, Adrian, so I know okay. that that's not going to be the case with you. And that's why I suggested this band, because I, I had a feeling that you really, really like them. Yeah. And you do. I, I like them a little bit. I, I feel yeah. like, once again, like I'm saying, re-listens could definitely do a lot for me, but I feel like they could go pretty high on an artist list, simply based on a value consistency a lot, and I mean, press six oh, records and one song that I didn't care for, so that's about as consistent great. as you can get. That's I mean, a great track record, it's, absolutely. It's, it's not to the record of, say, a band like uh, My Child, let me out wow, because I got a couple of vinyl now. They're not to the level of um my adornment of the national to where national. I probably love every song in the discography because I mm-hmm. head over heels for Matt Beringer, but we'll get there. I, I believe in me. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, after this, bringing Rich back on, going to the two thousands. I get a poll in the server. Um the the artists were Arctic Monkeys, the Yag Yag Yaz. Um, Interpol, Vampire Weekend, and The Strokes, which The Strokes ended up taking it in mm, kind of close. Not a ton of votes, so you should join the Discord server. That will be in the link below, as well as on there. There's a sign-up sheet for if you want to do an episode. ton of artists there. I want people to do this with me, so do it. But yeah, Strokes, six records, some more to Sade. However... Not as good. I'll leave that there. But um, there you go. <laughs> that being said, I really hope you enjoyed. I hope that you give the discography a chance, and I hope that you watch more of my stuff. That being said, though, you have a great one, and I will see you for the strokes next week.